Hi guys, welcome back to Iconic Podcast with me, Linda Stratton. I'm a new paradigm business coach and mentor to high achieving women and marketing strategist to forward thinking brands. And I'm so excited to be joined today by one of my mentors, Aisha Durrani. She is an astrologer. She is a business like supremo. She's an incredible coach and mentor. And she today we talk all about her journey into business, how she's used astrology to really skyrocket her success really quickly. And we talk about lots of different things that have helped her along the way. We have a conversation about social media and building an iconic brand. And it's so juicy. There's so much in there. I hope you love it. If you listen and you love it, please do share to your stories on Instagram and give us a tag and let us know your greatest takeaway because we love to hear that you are getting loads of value out of these conversations. If you feel pulled, please also leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast app. Give us a subscribe on YouTube because all of these things help us you know, work the algorithm, reach more people. It makes a real difference. And then we can reach more people and change more lives, inspire more people to change their lives and have epic success and get wealth in the hands of more women. So super passionate about all of this. I hope you love this conversation. Aisha is such a light in the world. I'm so grateful she came to have this conversation here today. Um, yeah, enjoy. Amazing. I am so excited. Guys, today I am joined by one of my beautiful mentors, Aisha Durrani, aka Hello. Oath Oracle. Um, Aisha, so grateful that you're here. I'm so excited to speak to you today. There is so much we can talk about in terms of creating an iconic business, because that's really what you have done. But before we like dive into the nitty gritty and all the different aspects that are fed into that, just tell us a little about you and your story and how you got to do the work that you're doing here today. Mm, yes, thank you so much for having me, Linda. It's such a pleasure to be here with you because this is what we're both meant to be doing. We're meant to be ushering in this new era of soul-led business, and it's always just so great to have these conversations. So my, my story, I'll just start with introducing myself. So my name is Aisha. I'm an astrologer and I've been studying astrology for almost 20 years now. And then I entered the world of online business in March of 2020, right at the peak of the most intense time of the pandemic. What I had when I started my business was a really rocky past where I experienced a lot of poverty and financial lack and struggles. I dropped out of high school at age 15. I left home at age 15. And um, money had always been uh, money and success as well. And like career paths had always been something that just felt like it just simply wasn't meant for me. It wasn't in the cards. It wasn't in the cards that I was dealt in this lifetime. And, you know, I had a lot of envy and jealousy for people who had a lot of not, not just financial abundance, but who had really powerful careers. So like, for example, I've, I've oh, I like these science guys, right? So I dated lots of different engineers and like rocket scientists and stuff like that, like literally. And I literally would be jealous of them because they really liked their job jobs and their jobs really suited them. They were well paid. They were pro solving problems that, and they were very engaged in what they were doing. But I identified as someone who like wasn't meant for success. And like, that's just not the cards I was dealt. Da, 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 da. So when I started my business, I'd already been studying astrology for, you know, 17 or so years. And I really started my my offerings in astrology through working with my friends' birth charts. Well, first of all, working my, with my own birth chart, right? So decoding my own astrological birth chart from when I was 14 years old, which helped me through so much of the hardest times in my life. When I felt alone and then I looked at my birth chart, I did not feel alone because I saw like the cosmic order and like the reason why I was experiencing some of the hardest stuff. And that helped me survive like some really hard times. Then I started working with my friends' birth charts and, you know, any guy we were dating or something like that. And then like celebrities. And I was just playing with all the all the different charts and the learning about them. And for those who I'm sure your audience is probably pretty familiar with human design, uh, I'm a projector, as is Linda. Um, so I received an invitation one day from one of my really good friends who I'd done a lot of just like for fun practice astrology work with her. Like, oh, Mercury's retrograde. And I checked your birth chart to see what it says for you and here's what it says like just kind of very casual and she asked me hey I'm dating this guy he lives in Europe 
I want to pay you to do a reading for him long distance. And so I was fully just invited to start doing these readings online. And from that reading came like three more readings. And from those readings, it was like a tree. It was like every, every one turned into three more, turned into more, turned into more. And that was so gratifying and rewarding. And I was like, wow, like I'm making money for doing this thing that I've been doing just for myself, by myself, locked in my room for like 17 years. Like it was just this passion that I just couldn't stop learning. I'm a one, three in human design. So I'm just here to study and just like learn and just like mess around and just like get my hands in there. So then fast forward a little bit, I'd done a lot of readings and I had the the very satisfactory feeling of doing what my soul is here to do and receiving financially for it, where there were weeks where it was like, there were days where I was like, I did two readings today and people love them and I got paid. And then there was weeks where I was like, I did five readings this week. Like what the hell? This was before I had a website or any social media. So that was alongside a bunch of other side hustles. So during this time, I was like working the door at like the, a reggae night that happened once a once a month. And I would be like the, for people in Vancouver, it's called Ting. It's like the one like reggae dance hall, like Afro beats night. And I would be working the door for like 60 bucks plus tips. This is Canadian dollars, guys. <laughs> I just be given the stamp, you know, putting the stamp on the wrist. So I was doing all kinds of random stuff. And then I was like, wow, like this, this doing astrology readings, this is the most natural thing in the world. And people's minds are being blown. Whereas when I worked the door, no one's minds were being blown, right? I'm just standing, standing there having, having a good time, but you know, there's a different level of fulfillment from that. So then I was knew that I, at some point, if I made a website, if I had a social media presence, more readings would come to me. I didn't even think about having a six-figure business. I didn't even know, even at that point, that that was available or possible for me. I just thought, hey, this income stream is growing. Imagine if there was more readings, that would be cool. So I looked at the astrology of the upcoming year and I saw certain things. I feel like some of your readers like are kind of maybe familiar with a little bit of astrology. So for example, something that I saw was that Uranus, the planet of disruption and change and shock was entering my 10th house, which is the house of career and life's work. So change and disruption is, is neither good nor bad. Uranus is not a bad planet whatsoever, but when it's in your house of career, there can be things that don't seem desirable, such as loss of work but it's ultimately always bringing you to what you're supposed to do, right? So I looked at that and I said, for some reason in 2020, starting in March, or actually, no, it was it was before March, but I, it, I looked ahead at 2020. I said, for some reason in 2020, I'm not going to have job security. And this was before the pandemic. This was before, like, and this was 2019 that I was looking at this. So I thought, great time to have another income stream of my astrology business. So I, you know, started getting really into it, studying about business, registering my business name. And I chose the start date of March 20th, 2020 for my business based on astrology. And then of course the pandemic happened, the world completely changed. I never went back to any of my previous jobs. And then to, obviously there's a lot that happened in the story. So I'll kind of keep it a little bit on the shorter side, but we projectors love to talk. So then he fast forward a little bit and my original first offering was my readings. But what happened was since my own journey with business and learning the strategies and how to do and create everything in business, I had no money for help for at the beginning. I had uh, five, I had my credit limit on my credit card was 2,500 Canadian dollars, which I feel like that's like 1700 pounds or something like that like mm. it's not very much and 2000 of it was already claimed so I didn't have any like you know website everything I learned how to do everything from scratch through that and my understanding of applying astrology to business I started creating very unusual extraordinary results um not unusual in the sense that other people can't have them because it is available to us but unusual in the sense that it often takes people longer to hit those milestones or they don't hit them so for example within six months I was having ten thousand dollar months um I started it in the end of uh, March 2020 by December 2020 I was having 18k months and so through perceiving what was happening when I was applying my deep knowledge of astrology to my knowledge of business, which was relatively new, although I do have a lot of placements in my chart that support me having a strategic thinking mind in general and seeing opportunities, etc. That then bridging the astrology with business, that was 
my true next level and next evolution. And that's what I love doing so much now today um, in 2020, 2022, as we're recording this, which is still so much astrology, but also so much let's actually use this information in our businesses to make these movements, to make these impacts, to create financial freedom for ourselves and others. And so it's been a wild journey because like I said, I, for like, you know, 30 plus years identified as um, being in poverty, having lack, not having privileges, not being able to do stuff that other wealthy or middle-class people were able to do. And uh, in a less than two weeks of actually moving into my first property. So it's really cool to see what is available to us. And that's why I'm so passionate about wealth work as well. So a little bit long-winded. Thank you for giving no, me to no. share my story. I know your story. I know it could have been like three hours. So I think you did really well <laughs> to, keep you. It, to keep it to that. But I mean, yeah, I think if people don't know you and they just come across you, they probably think of you as first and foremost, they'll like, oh, say an astrologer. But, you know, obviously I've done multiple of your programs and now having worked with you one to one over the last five months, like your your business knowledge is also insane. So it's like, yes, you you can help everybody optimize their business and their life and everything in line with astrology. But separate from that, you've got incredible business knowledge, full stop. Thank you. Aside from it. And Oh, there's so much I want to talk to you about, but I need to say this now. So thinking about creating, you know, for me, creating an iconic brand, it, brand and business, one of the things is, you know, <laughs> let's do things differently to other people and stand out from the crowd. And, and I just want to touch on this now so I don't forget to talk about it, but you've talked about it a lot within your group containers of setting your pricing when nobody else goes as an astrologer. And, and how you spoke about it, it's like, so should I let you tell your own story or should I say it? But I was about to say, like you, you say like you price yourself higher than a lot of other people do because you see the value because it's so life changing. That one off reading is so life changing for people. And like you say, you project you go deep, you see it all, you literally change people's lives. And I said in my very first episode of this podcast that, you know, I've. I was running this business in one particular way. Then in my words, I had a life-changing reading, <laughs> which was with you. I've had many astrology readings, readings over time. And, you know, what I find people usually do, and it's different because your, your soul, soul purpose reading, is that what they're called at the moment? Yeah. Soul wealth. Soul wealth reading, that's right. Yeah. So your soul wealth readings are very much, you know, positioned as helping you find alignment for, for to bring abundance into your world. You know, previous readings I've had with people, you know, they just they tell you the nice things that you want to see and they're kind of almost like trying to go along with you or and trying to give you reassurance of what you're doing is the right thing. It's like, oh, I understand why you're doing this. You've got lots of teaching in your chart and you've got this mate. You might want to do a little bit of this. But you were like straight away, you were like, okay, get what you're doing, Linda. But what I see in your chart is like money, 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 business, 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 money, business, money, business, money, business. <laughs> are you a business coach like that and anyway it's a longer story I'm going off a tangent we'll come back to that but something you talked about is you know you've priced yourself in a very different position to other astrologers and some of them may have been going for like 20 years but a you see the value in it b the people investing really see the value in it and c you you see yourself as taking yourself out of the market for anyone that doesn't want to invest in themselves at that level. So the people that only want to pay, you know, a couple of hundred bucks for their reading, that's available to them. Go elsewhere. It's not what I do. I'm a projector. <laughs> I see things and, you know, I'm going to change your life, um, which I absolutely love. And it, and it's, I mean, I said it to you when we checked the other day that you, you make a lot of bright, on paper brave decisions. Mm -hmm. Like you had a membership that was had over 100 people in it and was really really successful and obviously people more and more people still coming in and you just like burn it to the ground mm -hmm. you're like guys it's going I'm doing something else now and then it's like yeah I'm just going to keep up pricing up and pricing up and pricing up and people are going to keep paying it's like a lot of brave moves is that bravery that I mean I think knowing your story I think you're gonna say yeah but is that something that you've always had like since you were young like 
So I love this question so much because pricing especially is such a very, very, very personal thing. And one thing that I'm really passionate about in terms of, especially if we're talking iconic brands, iconic businesses, is when we have a commitment to our authenticity right from the start, then what we learn, because yeah, we are all in this, like, especially in the online business world, right? Like we're all interconnected in this tapestry of this collective energy, this web. We're connected on Instagram. We see what each other are doing. And there's a lot that we can gain from learning from one another. But when we have our center of what feels right to us, when we know literally what feels right to us, when we work with human design, which is one of your specialties in terms of understanding, this is my authority, this is my strategy. When we know who we are on a blueprint level, then everything we learn or witness or see in the world around us, even when I entered online business world as a newbie, really with no education whatsoever, like literally don't even know what algebra is. Calculus, no idea what that is, like straight up. Like I'm not exaggerating. I have no idea what that is because I, I dropped out when I was um it was I was 15 it was technically ninth grade but like ninth grade like just started and I was like no I can't do it and it left so anyway so like having that authentic anchoring as we navigate all the information the sea of endless options and information and strategy that's out there then all the strategies that we see around us just become these interesting tools that we can pick up if we want to rather than things to ever leave ourselves for so I have definitely been bold throughout my life it's quite strong in my birth chart when you understand your birth chart and you understand that with my north node being in the eighth house the north node is a point of destiny the eighth house is the house of death and rebirth burning mm -hmm. things to the ground and knowing when it's time to let go of stuff that's literally my karmic destiny to learn that releasing my membership was something I thought about for probably over six months and I it, so that that decision to an outsider might have seemed like wow that's so bold she just knew it and she just went for it and I was like well there was a lot of internal processing in between of like is it okay to do this what's wrong with me for wanting to burn this down when this is creating over 8,000 US dollars of guaranteed recurring monthly revenue every single month. Like even if I just did the membership, I would be making almost triple what I used to make before yeah. with just the membership alone as like my only job, you know? Yeah. So I had a lot of internal dialogue around that, but ultimately I have been in practice for a very long time of being willing to be different, right? Because I was an outcast in my family. My family comes from Pakistani lineage where the dominant or like the basically the only religion as far as I know is Islam. And sometimes there can be a lot of extreme energy towards women in Islamic culture. So everything about me was always like wrong. Like that's how I felt when I was growing up. Um, I was always like outspoken. I was always like challenging the teacher being a little shit. I was always like, like, well, what about this? Like, I was always like trying to like make the teacher wrong. Like, you know, and I was just always very, and it's in my chart. I'm a Leo rising with a, um, M Midhaven, MC and Aries. So even though I don't have any fire placements, actually I have no planets in fire signs, zero, no planets in fire signs. But when you understand your blueprint and you know, oh, I'm here to be an embodiment of this Leo energy. And in the public sphere through my profession with my Midhaven, I'm here to be this Aries energy, which is literally the warrior. So mm -hmm. that has helped me to make these harder decisions because I understand that's my blueprint. My blueprint is not just describing me it's actually the instruction manual to my highest timeline of success. So that means that if I'm censoring myself, so it's not that I have to try to be more of anything in my chart necessarily, but it's like that reflection helps me have clarity on decisions for myself. Because if I'm ever self-censoring, like, oh, you know, when there was a lot of, um, well, it, it's still a huge issue, but when racism was a really, really big topic on social media, I had inner dialogues with myself of, hey, because pe people were reflecting back to me, why are you talking about this? This has nothing to do with astrology, da, 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 da. And I was losing followers, but I had to like look at my chart was the confirmation that I needed of I'm here to be seen as a warrior in the public eye. Not everyone is going to like that, right? So I then had to, because of my past, back to your question of like, have you always been like that? I, I in a way I have, but I've still have struggled with a lot of really deep insecurities, mm -hmm. doubts, feelings of being excommunicated, feelings of I don't belong anywhere, feelings of um, rejection, humiliation. So I had a lot of it, it to me, it doesn't feel like, yeah, I've just always been really brave. <laughs> but if I look at my choices, it's like I, I made the hard choices from a really young age because I already didn't fit in. So in yeah. a way, it was less of a thing for me to not fit in in other places because I literally felt like that my whole life. And then through that, I found 
a level of empowerment with that or a level of like acceptance of that of like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to drop out of school now, or I'm going to do, do this thing now, even though I know my family doesn't approve of it. Um, because I just, ha and if you look at my chart, there's so many squares and oppositions and it's all in fixed energy. You're also very fixed as well. Linda. when we're really fixed, it's like, you're not going to change me. Like nothing, nothing yeah. could really change me. Um, and even in my human design chart, I'm mostly defined centers. I have two undefined centers. So I have a lot of my own energy and that's just always how it's been. So then I had to have certain breakdowns of accepting that, being willing to embody that. So I'm, I'm grateful that I came into the online business space in my 30s, because if it was in my 20s, it would have been a lot more of like a hot mess dumpster fire. Whereas now yeah. in my 30s, it's like, okay, well, I know who the fuck I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the exact words that you said. I didn't write them down. Sorry. But that when you said about like, just like the, getting to understand your own nasal chart and then like feeling seen like mm. feeling like understood that is literally how I felt unfortunately I came across it much later in my life but yeah I absolutely grew up always feeling like an outsider and I was very fortunate you know always had a lot of friends uh, was never bullied nothing like that but I almost like it was almost from my side, like not letting myself get in, you know, it was always mm. keeping a little bit distance. It was like making sure I was in like three different groups of friends, you know, mm. and each play time I'd go with a different group because I almost didn't want to get too like close in, in mm -hmm. case, I don't know, there's a whole thing there. But yeah, literally from being a little kid upwards, always feeling like there was, there was this, you know, in my household, never felt like I quite fitted in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is one of the reasons I absolutely love social media because, you know, it sometimes gets a bad rap, but, you know, because of, um, you know, the effect it's going to have on younger people and cosmetic surgery and all those different things, which I completely understand. Yeah. But if I, if it hadn't been for social media, I wouldn't have discovered astrology, human design, any kind of spirituality. It just wasn't in my world at all. And it's really through social media that I found my tribe. Like I've got some of my closest friends who I speak to daily, who I have never met in real life, mm -hmm. who live in Australia or, you know, they might just live in London. You know, I've, I've got them different places, but like, yeah, really connecting. And yeah, so a social media, I just wanted to say that. Um, but understanding your chart, then when I started to really get my head around my chart and, and you know, and who I was, like, there's nothing wrong with me like this is me and like you say these you know this fixed thing is that you know being caught, told I'm stubborn or you know being told I, I remember my brother used to say I'm really fickle because I change my mind I want to do different things all the time and now I know I've got an open G center mm -hmm. I'm like yeah of course I'm going to change my mind and do different things all the time and also with my stellium in the eighth house like mm -hmm. obviously it's a Taurus stellium so it's like a little bit more scared about burning things down but then when I, I was re reflecting on this yesterday because sometimes I think oh do I burn things down enough? And I actually, when I look at the number of careers I've had, the amount of different things I've done, and I do, like, once I'm done, I'm like, yeah, done, that's gone, move on to the next thing. Like, I, I can see that energy coming through. So I really want to talk about that. Sorry, I'm going on tangent. I want to talk to you about so much. But social media, let's talk about it quickly, because mm. you have had incredible success with social media, and so many people have a bad relationship with it. There's this thing about, you know, if, if my post isn't doing well, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience here, so, you know, I'm not projecting onto anyone else. This is what I've been through. It's like, I used to have attached so much like self-worth to a post. So I do a post, you know, wouldn't go how I wanted. That it was a reflection on me. I'd then disappear for three weeks and not post again. <laughs> and I've been working through with that with you and becoming consistent, et cetera, et cetera. But you've, had incredible success. I know you've got a program out on social media towards the end of the year. So like everyone go and check it out because it's going to be amazing. But is that something, again, is that something that you had a good relationship with from the start or is it something you've had to work on yourself? Love this question. And I, the funny thing with me and my life is so much of what is part of my business now was things I was doing when I was 14 years old. So when I was 14, mm -hmm. all my friends were online. And I would go on message boards. I'm 33, guys. So this social media was a different thing when I was 14. But my family, 
Um, my father works with computers and I had a computer much younger than a lot of my friends. Like we had like pers- our own computers from a young age, even though we didn't have a lot of money, but like through this, like we, for some reason, we were just like the first people with computers. I'm talking dial up days. I'm talking ICP, MSN, AOL instant messenger. Like I was on message boards and I would pretend to be older. I'd be like, I'm 18 and I live in California, even though I was like, 14 just like lie straight up just lying because I was just like I'm meeting friends and I was really socially awkward in person because I had a lot of unresolved trauma and nervous system issues that really which now I understand but at the time I didn't understand where I was really hard for me to open up and make friends in my school and we uh, we would move a lot like we would like move in the middle of the year and like it was just really hard for me to have friends in school whereas through a computer I you know I used to do um I used to download not recommending this but I used to download like the the cracked version of Photoshop where you get to like use Photoshop without paying for it like the pirated stuff like I used to download that and I would like mess around with Photoshop and I would like be on these message boards and um study astrology online so all of those things like it's like right now in my business people always ask me who does your design I do my own design and it's not like I've been practicing web design all this time I only really did it when I was like 14 and then I kind of like got over it but when I came back to online business world it was like wow like this is all the same stuff that I used to do when I was 14 so interesting because you do hear people say like you know what did you love doing as a child because that might have something to do with what you're supposed to do so then when it came to online business and you know I just always felt very comfortable with computers I type very fast you know I've just always been kind of competent with a computer from a young age so then when it came to social media, um, you know, I had my personal social media before, um, before starting my business. And I did have, you know, a kind of like a, sometimes I was really passionate about it. Sometimes I didn't show up, didn't really matter, wasn't really connected to a business or anything like that. Um, But it would, I would share, you know, photos of my travels. And it was kind of like this scrapbook thing to me. And I would get excited if something got 100 likes or something like that also had a lot of men following me at that time because it would be photos of me just you know trying to take like cute photos and stuff like that then when it came to my business I and you know you are a moon and Aquarius person I'm an Aquarius sun and Aquarius Venus Aquarius rules the internet and Aquarius rules technology itself Aquarius rules innovation within the collective the internet has completely changed the world and revolutionized the world right like completely as we enter into the age of Aquarius technology is going to keep the way that technology expands. If you look at from five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, what has happened is exponential compared to thousands of years before. So Mm -hmm. even next year, even the year after, even five years from now, technology is going to be like multiplying like wild right and that's for both good and bad right like it's not all inherently good or anything like that. But the way that I see social media is I was a lonely, depressed girl, 14 years old, studying astrology. And because of social media, I have the privilege to reach tens of thousands of people. Mm. That's all. That's the way that I see it. It's a massive fucking privilege. But when we are living in these bubbles where everyone we're following is these rich, perfect influencers who are just effortlessly successful and they make, you know, because the thing is, This is something that we've talked about that I talk about with a lot of my clients. They're in, you know, this is a business conversation now, like just moving into like the business social media, right? It's so valuable to have people in our lives, mentors, people that we're following, et cetera, that are showing us what's possible. Like they're making $50,000 months. They're making 100K months. They're making 20K months. But when that's all that we are seeing and we're in these bubbles and for many of us we spent a lot of the last two years a lot of 2020 to 2022 locked down at home a lot maybe our kids were if we have kids I don't have kids but those of you who have kids like homeschooling your kids and like being in our bubbles and then just seeing this distorted view of the world of everyone makes 50k months then we can start feeling like shit when we're not making that because we've changed what we think is normal or what our brain thinks is normal so there it's multiple there's different sides to it the main like mindset that I have with social media it's it's a massive fucking privilege I would never have met you if it wasn't for social media I would not have this business if it wasn't for social media so who am I to get angry when Instagram wants to change the algorithm just because it doesn't suit exactly me all the time, 100%. If it wasn't for that, like, it's not that I wouldn't be successful. I would have found another way. But without these platforms, I can't create a platform 
like, you know, I'm not there, nor do I necessarily want to. So I have gratitude for what that affords me in terms of it's a privilege, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to remember that and not feel entitled to the perfect social media that the algorithm just always highlights us and always chooses us and puts us in front of everyone, right? We don't understand how the algorithm works. Then the other side of it is taking responsibility for the things that for our experience of it. So what that means is there have been times where I recently unfollowed everyone and then I refollowed some accounts that I wanted to have on my feed. Now, this isn't about, do I know the person? This isn't about, um, you know, and maybe some people may have even been upset by this because I was just indiscriminately, I unfollowed everyone. And then I only refollowed who I wanted to see on my feed. I have muted all other astrologers because as a projector who's deconditioning over work, mm. I would feel pressure to report on every astrological thing. So I've had my own ups and downs in the journey of like, oh man, Mercury went retrograde. And I haven't made a post yet. Oh, and then I see that this person made a post and that's making my nervous system is responding to that because I feel like I need to like perform and keep up. And I was, it was like this treadmill. So I needed to mute all my astrologer friends whose work that I love because I didn't need to see them making a post on something that I hadn't made a post on yet because then that was like for my nervous system it was like red alert red alert like you need to make this post right now you're late you like all this kind of stuff which that's that's distortion right like that's not what I want coded in my business so I took responsibility for that someone else might not need to do such extreme things it really depends on like your nervous system what's your current experience of it and now when I want to go to those astrologers pages I choose it based on what I want rather than it's just on my feed. So if you look at my feed now, here's what it looks like. Instead of having, you know, a lot of my coach peers who are hitting bigger months or doing things where it's like, you know, I, I for example, I had to have this moment and a lot of non-sacral people that are fall, that are uh, listening in will resonate with this. I had to have this moment where, cool, I love working with these Manny Gen coaches, these manifesting generator coaches, because they just, they bring a lot of fun and like passion and like, I enjoy being in their spaces, but I had to not stop seeing what they were doing in their business because as a business coach and strategist, I see every fucking strat, my projector, business strategist, my Mercury's in Capricorn. Like I see everything that has a possible benefit to me, but I cannot do it all. So I yeah. actually had to unfollow a lot of the many gen coaches, even people I was paying to work with, because mm -hmm. I needed to choose. I wanted the desire to come from within me. If I want to see what's going on on their Instagram and actually go on their Instagram. And so now when I'm scrolling on my feed, here's what I see. Italian villas. I see architecture accounts. I see like epic crystal accounts that have like these massive like citrines and like I see um nervous system accounts that have these really powerful messages that I actually stop and read them. Mm -hmm. I see um poets like Ru uh, Rupi Kaur, Kaur, hopefully I'm saying that right, um and other poets and things like that. So I've really curated my feed. Not only what I'm putting out there is very curated because I love my Instagram. I love what I put out there. It's my art gallery. I see it as my art gallery. But I, in terms of my scrolling experience, it's what I enjoy seeing. It's not what is everyone else doing in my industry. It's not what does every other astrologer have to say about Venus and Leo? Because I, the, I need to clear that noise. Not that it's noise. I love the work other people are doing, but I need to clear that noise from my channel to take responsibility for my experience on social media. Mm -hmm. And then when I want to go to a coach who maybe triggered me in the past, but I like their work, it's going to come from me being like, I wonder what so-and-so is up to. And then I can go have an intentional consumption of their content instead of scrolling and seeing all these things that make me feel like pressure um and that you know we could be just evolved enough to be like this is my trigger and I you know I'm going to be 100% responsible but we also get to just like remove triggers from our day-to-day -day experience as well yeah. and then one more thing I want to say on it is boundaries on using it right so this is where I've had a big journey and I definitely have a lot more to grow into when it comes to what I'm about to share here but it's like checking Instagram at night because when it's like, you know, sometimes I just trying to have a scroll and then there's all these DMs around like, I need the link for this. This doesn't work. Um, can you, what about this price? Can you do a custom payment plan? Like there can be a lot of requests in my DMs and I'll be like hanging out on my couch at like 10 PM sometimes. And it's like, I'm yeah. not supposed to be customer service hours are closed. So I had to start implementing a lot more of those boundaries with myself of removing the pressure to respond right away. Um, not like just having 
having more discipline or even, I know some people just delete the Instagram app or have restrictions on it through like a third party program on your phone or your computer that like you say, don't open the app after 7 p.m., for example, and then it doesn't let you open it. Mm -hmm. Like I've had to experiment with a lot of things like that because my business so my Instagram is not just me just having a scroll and connecting with people. It's also my business, right? So there's a lot of serotonin, dopamine hits, adrenaline that's like associated with that. So yeah. then that's another place where we take responsibility with our usage because I was finding myself just compulsively grabbing it throughout the day. And I'm, I'm, I'm far from perfect. This is probably one of my biggest areas of growth is just letting it be or even, you know, having entire weekends where I'm not looking at it or I like put it away or I have my phone on airplane mode, et cetera. So that's my... I, you know, that's me speaking this intention. I've come a long way, but I have a long way to go before I'm really, truly like, great. I'm happy with like the time that I'm spending on social media. Yeah. 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 And and on that note, I, 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 I know your answer, but I think it's, it's, it'd be valuable for our listeners. Um, what is your opinion, uh, particularly if people just sort of starting out, but kind of like different stage of business on being on all platforms versus choosing one getting that under your belt, et cetera. Yeah. So I have tried um, a one three. So I'm here to experiment with stuff. Um, and like I said, I see all the opportunities. That's why I love business strategy and business coaching. And it's, I almost need d- discipline to not do everything because I just see, well, yeah. this could have a benefit. This could have a benefit. This could reach new people, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, my social media strategy is Instagram email list. And I recently started a LinkedIn. Um, I'm not super active on there, but I do like connecting with people on there. And I think that's a really cool avenue that um, more and more coaches and spiritual people, there's like more of that presence there now. Um, So that's something that's like growing and changing. And that's a great place of like connecting with leaders in like their different career and professional realms. And that's also, I work with a lot of leaders. I work with a lot of six, multiple six, seven, and even eight figure entrepreneurs. So like, that's like, that's kind of that intention for me with LinkedIn. Yeah. I have tried YouTube, believe it or not. Um, I have tried Twitter and I've been on TikTok. And when I say that, and Pinterest as well, when I say that, it wasn't so much my energy in um, Twitter, TikTok, and Pinterest. I more just did a content repurposing strategy with um, different people that have been members of my team in the past. We didn't see a huge amount of growth in those areas, possibly because it wasn't my individual energy actually there. We know how important energetics is. It was more just like, all right, I posted this here. Let's just copy and paste it over there because I didn't have the time or desire or passion to really be be inhabiting those spaces. Yeah. Um, so here's what I currently do is I ha- just feel the most connected to Instagram. I know some people, mm-hmm. I know people with seven figure businesses that their platform on Instagram is very small or small ish, but yeah. they love to pour their energy into Facebook or having a yeah. private Facebook group, because that's creating a lot of connection. Even if their Facebook group has 300 people in it, if those 300 people are ideal clients that love what you do, you mm-hmm. can have a seven figure per year business. So it's really not about numbers. And that's another thing to emphasize mm-hmm. with the social media thing. Yeah. My audience is like, big ish. Like I have 27,000, which I'm so grateful. And I love that so much, but I know people with 50,000 followers who make don't do not make six figures. And I know people with 2000 followers who have seven figure per year businesses, over a million dollar per year businesses. So the following thing, it can look like it would seem like that would make you more successful, but influencers don't necessarily have the most thriving businesses. Mm. That's for some people, that's their brand. So for me, especially I'm a Leo rising. So it really does uh, align with me to have be more of like an influencer type person in like the coaching and astrology world. So that really aligns for me. For other people, they have an intimate Facebook group where they feel really safe to do lives, to connect with people. And if there was three or 500 people in that Facebook group, they can still have more revenue than me per year. You know what I mean? So the whole follower likes thing, it's, it's not important. I work with, I like in terms of my mentors that I invest in, one of them has much less followers than me posts that are getting 30 to 50 likes. And she makes multiple seven figures per year. And I pay her lots of money to work with her. So like, it's all an illusion, like a lot of the likes and sure. Some people can have a lot of likes followers and make a lot of money, but there's all different combinations of that. There's people with big followings that will come to me and hire me. And I'll be shocked at how little revenue they're making, which is why they're hiring me because they don't know how to monetize. So anywho, back to like the different platforms. So here's what I do. 
I feel connected to Instagram. So the first thing is, which one do you feel connected with? Which one do you feel like it's fun? Like it flows, it feels good, mm -hmm. right? So some people might feel more comfortable, more happy on Facebook. Facebook does have this intimacy thing where it's like, yeah, everyone that's on my Facebook is like my friend. Whereas Instagram is more like, kind of feels like I'm talking to the whole world. Yeah. Um, and that there's like a different energy there. So stick invest the most I'd say in the one that feels really flowing to you like if you like making little videos on TikTok and you notice there is momentum that builds there and it feels good because it's like oh I'm giving it's being received more people are coming great like if you feel that flow with something I felt that flow with Instagram when I tried private Facebook groups I didn't feel that same flow I felt a little mm -hmm. bit like oh well when I do a live on Instagram there can be up to like you know two or three hundred people there and then I'm announcing this live doing all this promotion for a live in my Facebook group. And it just wasn't having the same zing for me. And it didn't feel as exciting and passionate for me. So I did mm -hmm. close that down. Yeah. Um, and so when, now that I have a team, what we do is I post on Instagram. That's where I just, I love posting there. My team never posts for me. I love posting there, but they will repurpose it into an email. Um, and then they might share it on Facebook. Cause why not? I have a team that's helping me. So why not? I can't say that. I can't say how much of a result that's had, but it just feels good to be, you know, some people might prefer reading a long form post on Facebook because they may be using their computer and it might just be more easy to like sit down and actually consume that versus Instagram. It can be very like, you're just scrolling past. You're not, it might be a little easier on email and Facebook to sit down and really be present with a long form piece of content. So might as well mm. put it over there as well. So that's, that's the whole content strategy that we have is I create and pour my life force energy in Instagram, and then it gets multiplied and repurposed into an email and onto Facebook. This is my business Facebook page, as well as my personal Facebook page. And it's just literally just a copy paste um, from my Instagram content. That's where I like to put my energy. So mm. for people starting out, don't feel Feel like you have to do it all whatsoever I have dabbled in a few other ones and maybe one day I will be like yeah I just want to like drop these like little quick thoughts in Twitter you know yeah. um and I'm open to to changes but I'd really like how it is right now in my business yeah I, I'm similar I started thinking I had to be everywhere and I had a Facebook group I had my Facebook business page I had my Facebook profile I had Instagram I um and to be fair, I hired I hired a team like one month after launching my business. Don't recommend that to anybody because I hadn't established my own processes and I was mm -hmm. having to had more work for myself, creating work for them to do and all those things. So yeah, anyway, I hired too quickly, but um, you do need to hire before you're ready. So <laughs> it's like a balance. But yeah, so then they were doing Pinterest for me and um, and what was the other one? And I obviously had my podcast. Yeah, so I was doing all of these things and it was just too much. And like you say, your energy is getting spread so thin and it, it's not your energy. So I, I couldn't go all in with anything. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm at the stage. I mean, Facebook, I had at least two, if not three Facebook groups. I start them and then close them and start them and close them. And I'm just, I'm just never going to do a Facebook group. unless I'm doing an online program and then I'll have a Facebook group with it. But yeah, never do a Facebook group again. Um, but yeah, I don't even post on Facebook to be honest with you. But um, yeah, great piece of advice. I really want to give you a chance to speak about astrology, but before we do, can we please talk about your branding? Because when it comes to creating an iconic brand, straight iconic business, I mean, your branding like says it all. It's so stand out in the market. It's so different. It, it like positions you as like a little bit mysterious, like, oh, I want to check her out. Let's see who she is. But then like when, as, as soon as you're in there, like as soon as you watch one of your lives, you're like, she's the nicest, smiliest, like Aww. person in the world. <laughs> So I haven't said this. Let me just tell you how I found Aisha. So I found Aisha um, one day and pretty much signed up to her membership within about 24 hours because I think it was like a new moon or a full moon coming up. So I was I, I was straight in. I was like, oh, yeah. And, and then I came off the first, I'm not joking, the first ceremony, uh, the first moon, new or a full moon ceremony, messaged her about your soul wealth reading. And then I got that booked because there wasn't, but that's right, because I was going to give birth and there was no availability. And I was like, is there any way you can fit me in before I give birth? So you like gave me a spot. And then, and I booked that in the August and our spot was like October or November time. And I think it was literally about two days later. So I hadn't even had that reading and I messaged you going, what about your one-to-one -one container? And I'd like, literally within about two weeks I'm an emotional authority I'm not supposed to do any of this stuff but I just myself <laughs> like within about two weeks I joined your membership 
booked my soul wealth reading book five month container with you and um, oh. it's hilarious but like I just I was so magnetized to you it was like I say like you like yeah your brand's like a little bit mysterious a little bit like yeah who is she like and, and you can see the depth and all that kind of thing and then seeing you in your magic seeing you when you're in your flow and you were talking about astrology and in all honesty I think when I I've got so much more than I could ever imagined out of our container working together. Mm-hmm. Because when I signed up, I, like I said, I mean, I didn't know you at the time, barely, but I was signing up to know myself. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the way I saw it. It was like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'd, I'd been doing personal development for a couple of years and I've been working with different coaches over a couple of years and done a lot of like mindsets. I mean, I'd worked through a lot of like inner child mindset stuff, but at the time I was like, I just want to know myself even more. Mm-hmm which obviously I've got out of our container, but then I've also got, you know, this incredible like business support and all the different, I mean, we, I mean, I literally am running a different business to when I started and I was not expecting that to happen, you know, I've completely pivoted and all the different things. It's been amazing, but I'm speaking too much. Talk to us about your brand. So was this an instant, thing? like, did you have a clear vision straight away as soon as you launched or has the brand pivoted and changed? Like when did the logo, what stage did the logo come? Um, all the different things. Yeah, I love this question because, and thank you so much. That means so much to me to receive that because I really see my brand and my social and my Instagram specifically as it's my art gallery. So one thing is the underlying premise where if we enter the online space and we're just looking at what other people are doing and we're like, oh, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, and we're borrowing from everyone else, then it's harder for our soul and clients to find us. But if instead we dive into ourselves and tap into not only like, who am I, but like, who's my highest version of myself? Who's my, um, you know, my seven figure pleasure queen archetype within myself? And how am I connecting with her, the one who's running the business that I desire to be experiencing, which for me, I'm scaling to seven figures per year. Uh, that it's like my next like desired space to be at. So uh, of course, uh, Instagram and, and especially Instagram, because it's so visually based, right? Of course, Instagram is often the best of us. And I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to share the best of us. And I think if that's connected to the authenticity of like, I know I'm becoming this. So I'm actually going to crystallize it and express it and emanate it through my visual content, because that's the, I'm, I'm merging into that next level that I'm becoming. That being said, I also share a lot of my humanness, vulnerability, and, mm. you know, my past and stuff like that on my Instagram as well. My branding has changed a lot. If you look at my very first branding, there was a lot more lighter colors. Um, my fonts weren't as dialed in. It wasn't as like me, but as a one three, and I believe this is for everyone too, don't try to have your brand perfect before you start. I started very, very imperfect. I have, I'll, sh- I'll, sh- I'll show you Linda, some of the, some of what it used to be. Cause I have like these screenshots that I saved just to like, for like the memory of it, like the souvenir of like, wow, like this has changed so much. So of course, I get a lot of insight on branding from my birth chart, from my birth chart, from the chart of my business, from the different codes that teach us in cosmic success codes, of course, things you can look at right away is your rising sign. Um, you can look at your Venus sign. You can look at, um, you can even tie in your North note to it because you do want to bring our destiny codes into our business, right? Because it's like, ideally, they're they're connected to one another. So uh, I do feel very proud of what I've created with my branding and it came through trial and error and just trying stuff and being like, I don't like this, <laughs> or like trying stuff, putting it on be like, no, I don't like that color. Like, why am I doing this? Or like experimenting with different things. Um, and if we see it as it needs to be perfect and it needs to measure up to blah, 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 we're already cutting off our life force. Whereas if we see it as this is a growing organic, it's going to change. It is. It does keep changing. There are times when it was a lot more goth. And then I actually started to bring in more color back to it so there was times when it was like all these random colors like lavender and stuff like that that's like not my color at all because I was just like you know messing around with canva templates and stuff like that and just like getting more competent with making the designs anything we practice that doesn't seem like it worked out at the time because if we think of the big picture of our business it did serve you so even you Linda hiring before you felt quote unquote ready that experience still served you and still fed you because you learned something that you can now like you can help your clients with that you know exactly how you want to do your team next time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so even with the branding that I look back and I, it's like cringe, like, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I like put that up there. But 
I still have so much love for that because if I didn't take that imperfect action, I wouldn't have fallen into like clicked into my flow with my creative flow, how I like to do design, um, how I want things to be expressed, how I like to be seen. And so it, it was like really colorful and just kind of like weird fonts. And, you know, my, my experience at 14 with Photoshop hadn't been that <laughs> profound that I was just like an awesome web designer right away, but I did courses. I did, um, I saw, watch YouTube videos. I noticed what I liked in branding. I noticed what I liked in branding from brands outside of my industry. Because when I was looking at coaching and astrology, there was a lot of very basic kind of stuff that a lot of stuff looked really similar. And then I was like, oh, this is what people do. Um, I'm not I'm not immune to that, right? I'm not immune to entering an, an industry I had no idea about and being like, other people are doing it like this. So I guess that's how it's done. Not trying to replicate them, but when you don't know and you're just getting your bearings, that's kind of common, I, I'd say. I'd say, at least it was my experience. Then through those imperfect actions, I started to find my little design hacks and my little, ooh, I like this. Ooh, that feels really good. And then it's following this feeling and this frequency of, mm, that's it. Mm, yeah. mm. And so there was a time it was really goth. Um, and then I actually had someone completely try and replicate all my branding yes. and like kind of like plagiarize my like entire business, like really in depth. Like it was like, whoa. And they went really, really in the like same like goth direction. And I then kind of moved away from that a little bit. And I decided to shine even brighter to be even more bold and I started bringing some color back in and it's the colors that you know just a quick branding exercise people can play with here is like what do you want people to feel when they go to your page right what do you want your clients to feel as like what's the activation that's available for them through your content not just the words but the visual energy because when and so when I say what they feel I don't mean if they read a post that's about that I mean if they scroll through your feed they arrive yeah. at your page they're looking at your bio they're looking at the whole thing it's all one package and maybe they're scrolling what do you want them to feel so for me I want people to feel rich I want them to feel like there's like a wealth activation that's happening even before they've read anything I want them to feel luxury I want them to feel passion and I want them to feel purpose like that this is a purpose I have a purpose like I want that that clear pathway of like this is what I'm meant to do because mm -hmm. that's those are frequencies that are strong within me and my journey I didn't always feel like that I often felt the opposite of all those things mm -hmm. um and for someone else they might desire their clients to feel serene calm grounded like peaceful like all the noise just goes away and maybe they have much more spacious of a of a feed or like there's more airy or ethereal energy for them or more nature images um so for me really rich colors i love using like peacock green for a recent like virgo post um like you know deep reds like a i think i did a venus and leo post where it's like this photo of this gorgeous like pink flower with water droplets on it and even though like that's like earth and water and leo's a fire sign there was just something about the color that was just the pattern passion of Leo is like expressing that to me. So when we start being really in touch with like the frequency and the energetic that we want our brand to have, then that gets to be our guide for images, colors, fonts, and placements that we're using. And not everyone has to do their own design at all whatsoever. You can have, um, but I still recommend that if you do have team members helping you with design, et cetera, that you create some kind of mood board, whether it's a Pinterest or um, like designs on Canva of things that you like, like set the tone and set that intention. Because if you're not felt in the design, then it's, there's less connection with your audience, right? So I know not everyone is like loves design like me. I'm like obsessed, even though I have a team that's helping me, I do all the design and then I might create. So for those of you who have a team or you're scaling, like for example, if I'm making a program, I will make the first graphic for that like the banner that would be the banner in the course portal and then from that now my now I trust my team because we've done a lot of stuff together to go take that and make it into other types of graphics like the email banner or the thing for this or the thing for this like because I've set the tone by making that original asset and then they can take those components of it and they can change sizes and they can make it work for other things that we might be creating within that so that way I'm not doing all of the design work but I'm setting the tone and the mm -hmm. like precedence the colors the the mood, the vibe, the photos that I want to use. Um, and then they're taking that and multiplying it. So that's how it's working right now for us. Um, and I, I do really like that. And I do empower us, you know, especially for in the beginning stages, it is good to learn how to do some stuff yourself, because like you said, it makes it a lot easier to have people help us when we actually know the process ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Look, we've only got five minutes, but I do want people, I think it'd be such an injustice if people don't hear you like just riffing on astrology. Have you got my chart to hand? Have you? Have I you, can you grab it. it up? Let, let, let's, right. So bear in mind, Aisha does a 90 minute reading. 
she's going to do a five minute example of the sorts of things you can pull out of a chart I'll honestly let, let you just do whatever you want to do with it but I just I thought we were going to have an astrology conversation and then I did too many things to ask you so <laughs> let's just like let you like just just yes, take the line by and just because it's so yeah I just want people to see how valuable it can be to understand themselves better yeah and, so like a yeah. little business little business yeah. exploration with uh, Linda's chart yeah, yeah. so Let's talk about the rising sign and Linda's rising sign is Virgo. So Virgo is the sign of discernment, refinement, of health, of details. Oftentimes Virgo rising people have very fine features. Like they even have like almost like a, the high cheekbones, long neck, often have like a prominent like collarbone and they can be like almost like a beautiful bird kind of energy. Like there's like a, there's like a lightness to their energy and the rising sign of not only our birth chart, but also our businesses chart. This this is a natural emanation that's coming through our bodies. So this is something we can use as a branding code. So when we think of the Virgo rising branding code, it's this energy of uh, groundedness. It's an energy of earthiness. There's an energy of details like and digestibility. So content that is very digestible, messages that are very clear and digestible. And this also really makes sense for Linda's like previous work and still, you know, this work will always be a part of you, Linda, with like nutrition and health because mm -hmm. Virgo rising people, their body is very attuned to subtle changes. And so they often do find themselves in nutrition work, yoga work, body work, the health um, industry, et cetera, the wellness industry, because they are really attuned on a physical level to these subtle shifts. When it comes to business, though, there's a lot more business codes overall in Linda's chart than the nutrition codes, because there is a stellium in the eighth house and in Taurus. So Linda has Mars, Mercury conjunct the sun, which means communication conjunct her radiance and being seen. So podcast, very aligned, very aligned here. Then we have Venus, then we have Chiron, and we even have the asteroid Midas is also in Taurus in the eighth house. Taurus represents money and self-worth and our embodiment and it's also this empress energy it's a very expensive energy especially in the eighth house which is also a house of money so the eighth house is a house of business finance investments as well as death and rebirth so it's kind of similar with my north node um where it's that energy of knowing when it's time to let go of something but then there's a lot of polarities in linda's chart there because the eighth house is the house of death and rebirth but Taurus it's in the sign of Taurus which is a sign of like holding on to life and building and structuring so there's going to be this dance that Linda has of when is it time to double down and actually root down into this and actually keep going with that steady stable consistency that Taurus has and then there's going to be other moments of this is complete and and, and that's it it's complete period and it's time to move on and turn over the new leaf so both of these lend so 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 well to business especially helping people really own their worth, helping people kind of disentangle self-worth from what they're charging with their pricing. It's an expensive premium energy. It's an energy of alchemy. And then it's specifically around material belongings, possessions, and our material wealth. So you have so many of who you are with your personal planets being in that space, but you also have Chiron there. So Chiron is a wound that we carry from a past life. That's also our greatest healing gift. So through even when you were mentioning before around, you know, keeping not putting all your eggs in one basket and like the friend groups, yeah. like right away when you said that I was just like Chiron in the eighth house, because there can be wounds around intimacy, there can be wounds yeah. around um money receiving money there can be wounds around um being in the body but you have so much positive energy there that's really helping you with that so helping your clients be in their body helping your clients feel somatically going through the somatic experiencing of becoming a wealthy woman becoming a successful business owner and it's also a sign with taurus it's an artistic sign so it's a sign of beauty as well so branding really really powerful with this like magnetism alchemy expensive energy in the brand and also seeing it as art so i really that that whole seeing it as art that i was saying that's really prominent in linda's chart because of this beautiful stellium in taurus which is a sign ruled by venus and you also have venus there so you have venus in one of her own homes and that's about beauty love art and money so really seeing the beauty that your your whole feed gets to be this art gallery that you're creating these beautiful things or curating or finding these beautiful photos and bringing them in to create this vibe where it's not about the likes it's not about the this it's not about that it's about creating this beautiful art gallery that your clients then get to experience and so 
it's this duality of like the very physical with Taurus being like the 3D realm, what's here right now, what I can touch with my hands, what I can plant in the soil, what I can grow, what I can eat, what I can experience with my five senses. But then it's in the eighth house, which is actually an opposite energy to Taurus, which is very formless and it's very liminal space and it's esoteric, it's energetic. So you're really bringing that balance with money. And then the way that with the Virgo, go rising it's expressing through your rising sign is like hey this is practical here's what we can do with this here's how you can take this and apply it yourself here's how this can serve you not just as a concept but as something you can go do which is why i love homeworks and like journal prompts and stuff like that for virgo placements because it's like mm -hmm. take this info but go implement it go integrate it into your world mm -hmm. Then you also have three really powerful placements in libra which is another sign that's ruled by venus and it's another artist archetype as well you also have your moon in the fifth house, which is the house of Leo and creative self-expression, another artist placement. Yeah. Then we have your North node in Leo, another artist placement. So you really are here to be seen. And I, I feel like I've really gotten to witness you open up more into that Leo North node because our mm -hmm. North node, for those who are unfamiliar with it, is part of an axis of the North and South node. So the North node is our future destiny and who we came here to become. And our South node is kind of these past life experiences that we feel like it's who we are, but it's kind of just a habit through our soul's experience. When we follow our North node, that's when we're going to be manifesting like crazy. That's when we're quantum leaping. That's when we really are like understanding, wow, I am a co-creator in this existence. The more we're in alignment with our North node, like this is to me, one of the biggest keys of manifestation, even though that's not really spoken about in, in the astrology community. So for Linda, it's about really being in your passion and your joy and being seen in that radiance. Um, so I love the new directions that you're going in. It's really, really, really aligned with this. And like the more that you're lit up in your passions, the more inspirational that is going to be to others and the more people are going to enter into your world. So there's so much permission in your chart to have lots of money, to be someone with material wealth, to be someone who's seen and recognized, to be someone who shines light for other people and the more that you're in your joy and this is where we get into the other layers of it right where it's like hmm, we sometimes have projector conditioning or where we don't know when enough is enough or yeah. we have people pleaser or good girl conditioning or perfectionist conditioning that's holding us back and coming from like our shadows wounds and other things that can be recognized in our chart and our human design chart as well but when we follow that north node as like a north star of like well i'm supposed to be in my joy and passion so if i'm sacrificing my joy and passion because I think I need to make this amount of money and I struggle and sacrifice to like stabilize this money and then I'll be in my joy and passion when actually it's the other way around. It's through the path of your joy and passion and self-expression that you will create even greater financial success. So of course I can go on for like five hours, but. <laughs> so I hope everyone just felt like how much I hang on every word I just says and you, you can see why I yeah, I signed up for all these different things in about two weeks. I think it's probably within about like a week, actually, to be honest with you. But yeah, <laughs> it was fast. It was fast. And she's such a gift. And you have so many masterclasses and programs, don't you? So um, I just got a, we'll put a load of links in the show notes, but I just got a masterclass simply on the North Node, um, the North and South Node. And you've got a huge astrology program, which, which I've purchased. You've got Mystic Magnetism, which is all about um manifesting you've got sacred sales century which talk about sales and you've got loads of stuff coming up over to you I'm trying to I'm selling for you sorry oh thank you Tell so people. much love I so, find you. I so appreciate that so people can definitely follow along on Instagram so my Instagram's at oath.oracle watch out for all the fake accounts like they're just targeting astrology and tarot accounts so hard right now. So it's oath.oracle, no numbers, no underscore, just oath.oracle. And I have horoscopes on there that I post twice a month. And there's just so much like free content as well as video trainings on there. If you look in the IG lives, there's a free astrology guide that can help you decode your own chart. And in terms of my plentiful offerings of master classes. I love the ones that Linda mentioned. I'd say great ones to start out with for master classes is the North Node. Um, it's the North and South Node. So it talks about past life karma and destiny. It's one of the most obsession worthy parts of astrology. And I love, you know, that's just something I wish everyone in this world knew. knew. Mm -hmm. Another one that I really wish everyone knew about is your Chiron placement, which is this deep unhealed wound, because not only is it a wound, it is our greatest healing gift in this lifetime. And I know many people that are in Linda's audience are people who have a gift to offer through their soul business, right? So our, when we bring our Chiron into that, that just takes it to the next level. 
if you want to like actually learn astrology with me, then cosmic success codes is the course where it's like literally like it's there's there's technical information there is it, it's it's for the people who want to truly learn astrology um, doesn't mean you have to become a professional astrologer, though many people do end up using astrology with their clients in one way or another, it will literally teach you to become your own astrologer and it will change the way you see the world and business and even relationships for the rest of your life. And then there's other programs that actually are not based in astrology at all, like my manifestation program, Mystic Magnetism, my sales program, Sacred Sales Ascension, and my two upcoming programs are Wealth Magician and Sacred Social Media. So my, my money program and my social media program, those are not astrology based. It's strategy and energetics and magic and all the stuff that I love. And I'd love to offer your audience a discount code. Uh, you can use the code ICONIC to get 20% off anything, anything that you've seen. This will not apply to one-on-one -on -one readings, but it does apply to any of the um, courses or masterclasses that we've talked about. So thank you so much for being so enthusiastic about it, Linda. I appreciate it. I love receiving that so much. I'm so glad that you've loved oh. the space. And it's been so awesome to work with you one-on-one -on -one and just like witness your expansion and your evolutions throughout this time. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. And um, yes, just thank you for everything that you said. And I just wish I could have spoken to you for three hours. Um, I hope everyone loved that. Um, if you listen, please do share on your Instagram. Give us a tag. I'll drop our tags in the show notes because we'd love to know that you enjoyed it. Tell us your greatest takeaway. And Aisha, I'm going to let you go. I'm sending you so much love. And thank you so you much soon, for everyone. having me. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye-bye.